everybody, Lotu for Life here, bringing you guys a brand new video after all this time. Oh god, so I am finally out of school for the next month or so, which means I can finally get back to making videos on a consistent basis, because holy crap, finals kicked my butt. So, <laughs> let's finally get around to talking about the new archetypes, well, two new archetypes, one that got a lot of new support, uh, with <laughs> Spirit Warriors. Starting with the first uh, archetype, my personal favorite of the three, like I'm going to be completely honest, Weather Painter. So, Weather Painter are an incredibly interesting archetype. They're one of the two control based archetypes in Spirit Warriors, whereas uh, you got Magic Bullets as well. But Magic Bullets are much more, or sorry, Magical Musketeers as they're called now, are much more aggro based. They're really focused on just like getting in a lot of damage. Weather Painters are the complete and total opposite of Mag Magical Musketeers. It's really weird how they both came out in the same set, yet are complete and total opposites of each other, while also still having the same general idea of controlling the board and stuff. And the big thing and the big difference is is that whereas Magical Musketeers rely on activating spells and traps from a hand, uh, Weather Painter want to have as many spells and traps on field as possible. And they make use of these spells and traps in various ways. And it's really, really intriguing to see how Konami designed this archetype. And I really, really, really like it. Now then, another big thing is that whereas Magical Musketeers are fiends and are all light, if I remember correctly, uh, <laughs> the Weather Painters are all fairies and of, of various attributes. And it's really, really intriguing. I like it a lot. It's very, uh interesting concept of this duality between the two archetypes now then another big thing that i gotta mention because i'm just gonna mention it here because it's better to save it now i'll just sit, say it now and save it just repeat it over and over every single weather painter has the effect of where if it's banished by the effect of a weather painter card it comes back during the next standby phase really 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 good effect uh, along with just their other effects in general so yeah <laughs> enough dilly downing let's get on with this so first and foremost is your main starter card weather paint or snow whenever it's normal summoning you can place a weather paint or spell or trap card from your deck and face up uh face up in your spell and trap card zone and you can only use that effect of snow once per turn and then of course she has a standard once per turn during the standby phase if she was banished by the effect of a weather painter effect you can spell summon her uh from that banner zone now then an interesting thing that i really got to make mention of the weather painter special summon effect it's optional and it's an actual activated special summon effect which means that your opponent can chain max c to it which is rather annoying but still very very interesting how to do that it's not like omega so don't get that in your head that it's like omega because it's not not in however i really got to say though that snow is an excellent starter card just being able to place any of your le weather spell or trap cards directly from your deck into your face up spell and trap card zone and generally speaking you're going to get her canvas in particular but however uh, you can get any of them so if you're if it's late game mid game early game whatever doesn't matter she's still a really great card she's basically a stratos and she also grabs a stratos spell or trap card too which is just really really great she has pretty good stats i mean i <laughs> zero attack isn't the greatest obviously it's actually like the worst but however 2200 defense is absolutely amazing so typically speaking while well, yes you're going to normal summon her get a spell or trap card and then while well, you're going to usually banish her right away because you're usually going to grab the search card and then you're going to get a search and then they're in the next standby phase she's going to come back and face up defense position because while well, you're going to get special summon her which is really really great and just it's an overall great card and then we got <laughs> weather painter thunder who is arguably the deck's second starter kind of sort of really so Weather Painter Thunder, uh, 1700 attack, level 3, Fairy Light, whereas Snow was a Fairy Earth. Uh, Thunder can uh, send one face up continuous spell or trap card you control to the graveyard, then place one the Weather spell or trap card from your deck to your uh, face up in your spell and trap card zone, and then you can only use that effect once per turn. And then he, she, it has the same effect as every other one where you can spell someone from your banner zone. So, Weather Painter Thunder is another really great card. It's another kind of sort of starter. It's not really a starter because you have to have another card, but can still grab any of your Weather Spell Trap cards directly from your deck. doesn't matter which. Now, another really big important thing to keep in mind is that you can send any Spell or Trap card that's face up, that's a continuous Spell or Trap card, that's face up in your Spell and Trap card zone. So, if you have like a... 
uh, anti-spell fragrance, Valhalla, Hall of the Fallen, any of those sort of things, you can banish that, I mean, well not banish, send it to Graveyard, and then get any of your weather spell or trap cards. It's really, really great, especially whenever you want to start popping off with some combos, or maybe you have a card that isn't really helping out too much anymore, so you decide to swap it out. Really, really, really great card in general, and its stats are actually really, really great. 1700 attack is just phenomenal for the most part, especially for a level 3, so just really great stats in general. And then we get a kind of sort of treeborn frog for the deck, <laughs> Weather Painter's Sun. So if he's in your graveyard, you can send one face-up continuous spell or trap card you control to the graveyard, then spell summon discard in face-up defense position. If you do, place one to weather spell or trap card from your hand into your spell or trap card zone. You can only use this effect of Weather Painter's Sun once per turn, and he has a standard other effect. So Weather Painter's Sun, again, like with uh, Weather Painter Thunder can send any spell or face up continuous spell or trap card. Does not have to be a weather, which again is really great, especially if you have something that you don't really care for. Now, then, funnily enough, Weather Painter Sun is the only uh, really innate way that the deck has a special summoning monsters aside from their, you know, banishing effect. So that is really, really, really kind of sad. <laughs> I'm going to be completely and totally honest because Weather Painter Sun, he's a good card in general. But however, this deck is incredibly slow and it needs more ways of getting monsters out onto the field. And Sun is great, but he's just one monster that can do it. Every other monster does not have a special summon effect like this. If some, if at least one other monster had something like this, like maybe send something from your hand to special summon it and then put one from your graveyard back into your spell and trap card zone, would be really, really, really great. But however, right now, Sun is the only way that you have really to get more Weather Painters out on field without relying on outside support or their banishing effects. Now then, with that being said, one thing to keep in note for Weather Painter Sun is that you have to have a Weather Painter Spell or Trap card in your hand that is not the same as any of the ones that you currently control. That's because you have to place it. That is part of the effect to summon him, which means that you can't just uh, send something, spell summon him, and then, oh, hey, the effect is place fizzles. No, you can't. If you do not have a valid target in your hand to place into your spell and trap card zone, you cannot summon Sun off of his effect. This is something that you really got to keep in mind. It's very, very obnoxious, but, however, it's still important because it gets another card into your field, and then also, of course, you still open up a zone. Still, though, I really, really like this card. I think he's a solid 1-2 to two of in the deck. Uh, the, only because he's, well, a hard ones per turn like the others. If he was not a hard ones per turn, I would definitely say play 3 because you could get him in a graveyard easily, and then you can, well, very easily just spam out RCLs or Weather Painter Rainbows with him. But, however, anyways. And then I think I forgot to mention it, but Snow and Thunder are definitely 3 ofs. And then we get Weather Painter Cloud. Now, this guy's like the recursion of the deck so if another face up weather card you control in your uh is sent to the graveyard you can target up to two weather spell or trap cards in your graveyard place them face up in your spell or trap card zone you can only use this effect of a leather painter cloud once per turn and he has a standard effect so he's a pretty solid 1500 body uh, has a great effect so that the big thing here is to keep in mind that it counts for any the weather card going to your graveyard in order to place back your spells and traps into your back row so if like let's say for instance you have him a sun and a cloud uh, um, and a uh, snow out and your opponent runs over sun uh, you can place two uh, two spell or trap cards from your graveyard back in your spell and trap card zone. Really, really, really uh, important to keep in mind of that. But a lot of people think that he can only trigger off of sending your spell and trap cards. Doesn't matter. So, all in all, he's a really great card. He's a definite recursion card. Definitely powerful. But, however, he is definitely a mid to late game card, and really in essence, especially after your opponent starts just nuking your back row with like Twin Twisters. Uh, he doesn't counter Cosmic Cyclone, though, which is a sad thing to say. But, however, he's still a really integral card to play. I say two of as a really just useful card to use. And then we get the Weather Painter Aurora, who is strangely enough a level 6 in a deck that is comprised of mostly level 3s. When this card is normal summon, you can place one to Weather Painter Spell or Trap card from your hand, deck, or graveyard into your Spell and Trap card zone. Your opponent cannot target the Weather Spell or Trap cards you control with card effects. Also, they cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. And then it has a standard effect of, well, being able to Spell Summon herself back. Aurora 
<laughs> is one of the best cards in the deck. I'm going to be completely and totally honest. 2200 attack, 2k defense, effects, uh, attacks is just generally good. But however, the big thing is that she protects your spells and traps. And in a, de in a day and age where you're going to be having to deal with Cosmic Psycho and Twin Twister, uh, good lord, everything in between, I hope I'm not saying Cosmic Cyclone and talking about a different thing. <laughs> the one that banishes spells and traps to paint a thousand life points. All in all, all in all, Aurora is one of the best cards in the deck. However, she is a tribute summon monster, which is very, very annoying. So, really, how many you play in the deck is really down to you. Personally, I've been playing three, haven't been having any issues with bricking or anything. I know it's like one of the big concerns is that, oh, you're going to brick with her. I haven't had any issues. But however, it's completely understandable if you want to play one or two because she could be a brick if you just don't open up anything to get her out on field. Now, that being said, I really don't like it how she only triggers her effect to play stuff on normal summon. I get that they can't really make it to where she triggers it on special summon because then her effect to bring herself back like all the other weather painters would be stupid because, oh my god, oh hey, free stuff every turn. <laughs> but however, overall, Aurora is just an absolutely integral card to the deck. She protects your back row and makes it to where you don't have to worry about them getting, well, blown away. Then we got Weather Painter Rain. God, okay, so every other monster in the deck is good. Rain, though, is not, <laughs> okay? So if this card is spell summoned, you can place one to weather spell or trap card from your hand face up in your spell and trap card zone. You can only use this effect of Weather Painter Rain once per turn. Then she has a standard effect of everybody else. So, she also has 1200 attack, 1400 defense. Gotta make note of that. Pretty mediocre stats. And... <sighs> She places a Weather Painter Spell or Trap from your hand into your Spell and Trap Grid Zone. Keyword there is your hand. She She's just bad. Why does she place it from your hand? You can just activate it from your hand uh, and all that. I mean, yeah, sure, you can place your traps and stuff, which is nice. But that's not worth... <laughs> that's not a good enough reason to play her. She's just not that great. She's really, honestly, the worst of the entire archetype. If you're going to play her, play her as a one of. Otherwise, you're, you're just better off not playing her at all. But replace her with a maxi. Anything else, I don't care. She's not a good card in the deck. She would have been a whole lot better if there was like more of a reason to place more stuff from your hand. But generally speaking, the Weather Painter spell and trap cards in your hand, you can just set or activate right away. She's really only good if you have Anti-Spell out, which is really sad because Anti-Spell is not a searchable trap card or anything. But however... Uh, she could have been a lot better, but she's not. I feel like that she would have been a lot better if she placed one from your graveyard, or like I said, hand or grave would have been better. There's so many different ways you could have made her better, but right now, though, she's just bad. At least she's cute, I guess, but nah. Uh, come on. Go. There we go. Okay, and then we get the boss monster, the Weather Painter Rainbow. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Weather Painter Rainbow. Let me just say this right now is one of the best boss monsters ever printed. But, however, she is in kind of sort of the wrong archetype. <laughs> it's really weird. So, she needs three to the weather monsters. She's a link monster. Uh, she points down, bottom left, bottom right. Really good link arrows in general, but also even better for her effect. Uh, needs exactly three weather mo uh, the weather monsters, which is kind of annoying, because if they ever get a link two or anything, you're still going to need three, which is very, very obnoxious. And then she's 2400 attack, and link 3, obviously. When your opponent would special summon a monster or monsters, you can send this link summon card to the graveyard. Negate the summon, and if you do, destroy that monster or monsters. Once per turn during the standby phase of the turn, after this card was banished by the effect, well, to act from the field to activate a the weather card's effect, you can special summon this banished card. The weather uh, effect monsters, this card points to gain the following effect. When a card or effect is activated, quick effect, you can banish this card, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that target. So, I mean destroy that card. So, see yourself as a walking solemn judgment. Anytime your opponent would normal or spell summon a monster, or sorry, would just spell summon a monster, not normal summon, would spell summon a monster or monsters, you can send her from field to graveyard, negate that summon, and if you do, destroy it. Really, really great. And then, also on top of that, while she's in the extra monster zone and is pointing to monsters, your monsters that she points to gains the effect to be able to just be of many solemn judgments but not be able to negate summons. Like, just literally being able to negate any spell or trap card. 
is really good. Oh, and it's any monster effect too. So just really being able to negate anything. Except for summons. That's stupid. Being able to negate anything. Like, oh my god. If you're doing against like spirals and you summon rainbow with three monsters behind her <laughs> your opponents are going to be having a hard time because anytime they activate anything you're going to be able to negate and destroy it and then if they do manage to summon out something you're just going to be able to vault negate and destroy it it's really really powerful the biggest issue with weather painter rainbow is due to just how slow weather painters are they are not easy they do not have any easy way of getting multiple monsters out on field easily and, and even when they do get multiple monsters out they oftentimes don't have anything pointed behind rainbow and if they do it's usually just one monster so you're only getting one negate weather painter rainbow is good on paper and just looking at the cards if, if, you, if you ignore everything else about the archetype just look at her effect she screams broken boss monster but <laughs> uh, she's just in the flat out wrong archetype that or hopefully one day weather painters will get more ways to summon out more monsters easily but right now rainbow is really not that easy to summon and oftentimes is not worth the effort to summon either because usually you generally want to try and get the most off of your spell and trap card effects over just summoning out a big boss monster that being said, though, if other painters ever do get more support, and that makes it to where it's easier to summon her, we could have an issue. <laughs> a big issue. A, a weather painter being like a broken meta deck or something issue. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but it, it'll be intriguing to see if it does. Now then, for the spells and trap cards, first and foremost, we got the weather snowy canvas. So, generally speaking, this is going to be the first weather painter uh, canvas card that you're going to be searching out. Canvases being, well, the spells and traps, obviously. And, generally speaking, again, this is going to be the first one you're going to grab off of snow. Kind of funny how the first one you're going to grab off of snow is her own canvas. I don't know. I just thought that was always funny. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> for the first effect here. The weather effect monsters in your main monster zones of this card's column and its adjacent columns gain this effect. You can banish this card, quick effect, add one to weather card from your deck to your hand. Also, you cannot add cards from your deck to your hand for the rest of this turn except by drawing them. You can only control one to weather snowy canvas. So, this sets three precedents for every single weather uh, canvas. First and foremost, it gives all weather painters that are in the col same column as it and adjacent to it its effect. And then also you banish the weather painter to do the effect and then also you can only control one of each canvas this card is really 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 good so just being able to search out any weather card that means spells traps monsters whatever just being able to grab anything and also while it's technically not once per turn it is also at the same time because it prevents you from being able to add anything but however you can still play draw cards like pot of desires and stuff i don't actually recommend pot of desires in the deck it's not good but however uh you can get around this not well not really kind of sort of once per turn effect by chaining all three of your weather painters that are being affected by it to it so that you could get them off the board so you don't have to worry about them getting nuked or anything uh, but however, that's just you still only get one search. It really sucks, but oh well. Just being able to get them off the board sometimes is best because a your opponent might have a regeki or something, and not every single other weather uh, painter canvas is going to be able to dodge like that. Next up, we got the monster reborn card, the weather sunny canvas. The weather painter effects, blah blah blah, you know all that effects. So then, this thing's unique effect is that you can. Banish this monster, so whatever the monster is being affected by. Uh, then target one monster you control. Tribute that monster, and if you do, spell summon one to weather painter uh, monster from your hand or graveyard, but not with the same name as the tributed monster had on the field. So this card is a really mediocre monster reborn for the archetype. So this is where you can banish the weather painters that are being affected by it. Uh, then target a monster, tribute it, and then summon out any other weather painter. It's really nice, but you're still nagging yourself for two to summon one monster. So you're getting rid of one monster by banishing it, and then you're tributing off a monster, and then you're getting one monster back. So you're using two monsters to get one. And that is just incredibly mediocre and oftentimes you do not want to use this the only time that like you really want to use this is to bring back rainbow only for the extra damage or in order to bring back like thunder so you can use her effect once more 
really in all honesty sunny canvas is a one to two of i personally would prefer one i can understand why you might want to play two uh but really honestly snowy canvas is a three of i forgot to mention that but yeah snowy canvas three of sunny canvas one to two of leaning more towards one of but oh well that's just me then we got rainy canvas <laughs> so in this card, you can banish the monster, then target one spell trap card your opponent controls, return it to the hand. So it doesn't pop the spells or traps, but it does get rid of them kind of sort of temporarily by returning them to the hand. It's kind of great. It's like one of those weird ones. I mean, like I can understand why some people might want to admit it entirely for better spell or trap removal. But however, just for being the name of a re the weather <laughs> spell or trap card, I can see why people would still play one of it. It's great for just being able to get rid of back row during the end phase, but aside from that, that's like the only time that you do want to use it. So overall, it's just kind of there. <laughs> Again, it's one of those ones I can understand if you want to play one of it, and I can understand if you don't want to play any of it at all. Then we get the Weather Cloudy Canvas. Now this card I feel like is a bit underrated. It's actually surprisingly useful in a lot of different utility ways. So you can banish the monster, then target one face up monster on the field, except during the damage step. Quick effect, half its current attack for the rest of this turn, but it can attack directly this turn. So, basically you can banish your monster, target a monster on the field, it can attack directly this turn, but its attack is halved. So it's really nice for being able to just reduce damage, not take a lot of damage. Uh, or also being able to just target one of your weather painters to be able to get in some direct damage. It's great in general for those two utility reasons, but overall it's just not the greatest thing in the world. It kind of sort of sucks in that aspect, but however, it's still a great card for being able to dodge things, reduce damage, and make sure that you live longer. So I would say personally it's a one to two of really in all honesty. And then we get to the good stuff. I'm going to be honest, I like all the traps for this deck. So, the Weather Thundery Canvas. <laughs> uh, so, at the start of the damage step, if this card, that monster that's point, that might be affected by it, that is, uh, battles an opponent's monster, you can banish this card, return that opponent's monster to the hand. It's a Grand Mole. It turns your three Weather Painters that it's applying to Grand Mole effects. And that is really, really, really funny. It's great. It's powerful. That can get really, really, really obnoxious for your opponent. And it is arguably the best of the trap. Next up is the Weather Auroral Canvas. Good lord, I have to like really like try and pronounce that word, otherwise it sounds like I'm saying oral, and that's just, it's a different thing. <laughs> anyway, so the Weather Auroral Canvas. This card, it grants to your monsters, uh, when it's every one card is added to one player's hand, except during the damage step, you can banish this card, banish the added card, and if you do, that player draws one card. So, on the surface, it sounds bad. <laughs> like, oh hey, your opponent adds a card to their hand, you banish that monster, banish that card, then they get another card. So, oh wow, you need yourself one to give your opponent one more card. But, here's the key thing. This, you can do anytime your opponent adds any card to their hand, and it's got to be exactly one card. So, let's say you're doing against Spirals, okay? And they activate Resort and activate its effect to search out Quick Fix. You use this card... Banish your monster, banish quick fix, they get a new draw. Sure, they got, they still got a new card, but they lost quick fix. And that still really hurts them. And this can be applied to literally every deck out there. Anytime that any deck searches, and almost every deck searches nowadays. A deck is not good if it does not search in some sort of way or whatsoever. So, every deck searches... And therefore, being able to use this card to being able to get rid of their cards that they're trying to get a hold of. Yeah, sure, they still get a card, but they don't get the card that they wanted, okay? If you're doing against Pendulum Magicians, and they search out Harmonizing Magician off of uh, Time Pendulum Graph, I think that's the right one. Uh, and then, oh, hey, you can trigger this, banish it. Oh, hey, now they got a, I don't know, a Twin Twister instead of a freaking <laughs> Harmonizing Magician. Now you just screwed up the play. They can't do their combos. This card is really 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 good and like thunder canvas which i forgot to mention i feel like that these are both two to three ofs like in all honesty both traps are just two to three ofs they're both really great they can easily they're your powerhouses really in all honesty uh now i only say two to three ofs and honestly i'm leaning more towards the two because they're so easily searchable and you can grab them back from your graveyard relatively easily so you don't really need to worry about just you know gotta getting more of them so i feel like two of them two for each is just the best thing to do it's really really great 
very powerful card. Uh, an interesting thing to note is that you can use it on yourself. So, like, let's say, for instance, uh, you drew a card, it's a terrible card, you don't want it, you can use it, banish one of your uh, dudes, banish the card you just drew, and then draw for another card. It's really, really cool how you can do that, and also do it to your opponent during their draw phase, so, like, if if you're reading their, like, face and stuff, you can tell that, they're, oh, hey, they got a good card, you can use this, banish the card that they drew for their draw phase, and then you let them get a new card, and see how badly that screws over their plays. So, now then, outside support. This deck has a lot of options, and I forgot to actually put it up here, but however, there's something else that I want to mention too. So, first and foremost, the Monarch Storm Forth is a really useful card in this deck, especially if you're playing Vision Hero Witch Raider or Masterpiece, or maybe even both. Because if you're using Monarch Storm Forth, uh, first and foremost for Aurora, because she is a tribute monster, you gotta tribute something to summon her. So you can tribute one of your opponent's monsters with Monarch Stormforth, and then you don't have to worry about, you know, covering the cost yourself for your monsters. And then also, of course, if you're using uh, Witch Raider or Masterpiece, uh, you can, well, you know, tribute your opponent's monsters too. Now then, Witch Raider and Masterpiece I put on here as well, because these cards let you tribute uh, your spells and traps to summon them as well, which is really, really useful. Fission Hero Witch Raider, for those who don't know, Whenever you, whenever you would tribute summon him, in addition to monsters, you can also tribute uh, continuous trap cards to summon him. So, like, let's say it's like you're going for game, and you want to go for, well, more damage and stuff, and you don't want to use up all your monsters, you can tribute off your traps to summon it. Whenever you do, you can destroy all of your opponent's spells and trap cards, but the turn yet you do that, you can only summon hero monsters. Really, really powerful card in general. 27 are attack power. It's a warrior. It's just level 8 too. So if you play it along with some other level 8s, you can play some trade-ins to get even more uh, searching and stuff. Well, even more drawing, I should say. And then, of course, everybody knows what Masterpiece does. So you can trip it off a spell on a trap. And then just go from well, having one of the arguably best boss monsters in the game <laughs> very, very easily. So very powerful cards here. And Mon Monarch Storm 4 helps out a lot. Anti-Spell is a great card to play in the deck. It's very, very useful, very, very powerful. And the big thing is, is that most of the time you are not activating your spells. You are placing them, okay? Snow, Aurora, and Thunder all place your spells on traps. They do not activate them. So therefore, you do not have to worry about Anti-Spell screwing you over. And even if you do have to get rid of Anti-Spell, you can get rid of it with Thundery very, very easily. And then Rivalry of Warlords is honestly better in the in the pure build or as side deck material uh, for the pure build or heck, even in the builds with the tribute dudes over here. And the big thing is, is that everybody's a fairy and a lot of the other decks out there right now have multiple typings. So being able to just make it to where you screw over your opponent big time with a bunch of fairies is very, very powerful. Now, that I forgot to mention it and I really should have made it another slide, but oh well. So, another big thing that a lot of people like to do with Weathery is use Psyframes. So, because you banish all your Weatheries and you clear out your Monster Zone, uh, you open up your Monster Zone and then therefore you have no monsters, so then the Psyframes can use their effects. Which has led to Psyframe Weathery builds being rather popular. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of them, but however, I can understand if you would want to play a Psyframe Weathery build. So guys, that's my thoughts and opinions on Weathery in general. I really, really like this deck. I feel like it's kind of underrated compared to the other two decks in Spirit Warriors. The deck is really good. It's very, very powerful. I think it could be a solid rogue deck. Yeah, sure, it's not. I mean, it's arguably not as good as Magic Bullets. But honestly, I'd argue that it's actually kind of better because Magical Musketeers or Magic Bullets, whatever you want to call them, can easily get screwed over by some monster destruction or heck, even a Book of Moon. So... Really, in all honesty, personally, my whole pick between like the best of the three is Weather Painter. But however, do not worry, I will be covering Magical Musketeers and also the third deck in Spirit Warriors as well uh, in upcoming videos. <laughs> Sorry if this video is a bit rocky. This is my first video in weeks. I feel really bad. I mean, my first real video aside from the freaking news videos. <laughs> uh, so, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. See you all later. Peace out. Goodbye. And have a great day.